Hey everybody, um, I am currently uploading my uh, weekend summer sundown video here and we're crossing our fingers that I don't get any copyright strikes because um, it does feature some music. Um, uh, I am about to make dinner and so I figured I would make a video. Uh, we're going to do chicken pot pie, which is one of Midwest Magic Cleaning's favorite things. Um, generally when I do this I have to make two pies because he can eat like a whole one to himself. Um, so I have been making this a while, so I don't, like, I just kind of wing on my ingredients. Um, so I'm going to try and show y'all, like, very visually what I put in there and, like, how much of everything, because I just kind of, you know, thought, toss stuff in there. So I'll try and get you amounts and everything like that. Uh, no promises. So, uh, it's super easy to do, because for one thing, we're using pre-made crusts. Um, pre-made crust saved my life. I cannot make a pie crust for anything. I've tried all the methods. My mom makes a fantastic homemade pie crust, uh, and I just can't do that. So we're using pre-made uh, pre crusts, um, chicken, carrot, onion, celery, garlic, milk, butter, pre-made crust, um, and the salt and pepper. That's about all it takes. So uh, we'll get started here shortly. Hey everyone, we're gonna get started here with our chicken pot pie. Um, I just wanna warn people, I know some people have an issue with chicken uh, or like raw chicken. Uh, I'm gonna start with cook the raw chicken here. So if that uh, bothers you or if you think that is icky, uh, no judgment and um, go ahead and skip this part. <laughs> Fast forward a little bit. Um, these I think might still be a tinge frozen, but they'll be okay. Um, I am making two chicken pot pies um, and then a little bit extra for me with some biscuits um, because someone has one of my pie pans and so I can't make them all. Um, so please remember when you're dealing with raw chicken to like, you know, follow safety protocols and all that. Um, I trim mine pretty well um, to get all of this type of stuff off and to get the little tenderloin sliver skin off. So what I'm going to do is cut this up um, and then I'm going to pop it in a dish with some seasoning and then I'm going to get it frying in a pan or like cooking in a pan. Um, so yes, that is what we're doing here. I'm gonna season it with garlic, salt, and pepper, which is kind of a basic seasoning that I use. Um, so yeah, we're just gonna get this cut up into bite-sized pieces. This keeps going on a frame, which is fun. And like I said, this is one that I've made uh, quite a bit. Um, so I'm going to try and like be mindful to show you the steps that I make in case I forget to give measurements or whatever because I just don't have those in my brain. Um, the cook time that I follow is uh, Pillsbury. So if you Google uh, Pillsbury um, chicken pot pie recipe, you're going to get what I'm using or the like kind of and that's kind of what I built mine off of was that whole recipe and like I said earlier we are using um, pre-made crust Pillsbury pre-made crust no sponsorship or anything um, FYI that's just what I like to use store brand is fine making your own is fine um, but I just can't I can't make my own. There's also um, what I used to use when I was still working um, or I didn't have time to make everything from scratch because it's a lot of chopping and a lot of people uh, don't have the spoons for chopping um, or, you know, whatever the case may be. There's like a frozen blend that has, it's like carrots and peas and pearl onions and celery, I think. Um, and I used to get that a lot. And then there's like, you could get your, you could get rotisserie chicken and do this with rotisserie chicken. In which case you could just like skip the chicken cooking step and 
assemble and pop it in the oven. So, you know, whatever you have the ability to do, um, you know, the time or the spoons or whichever, um, just do, just do that. Um, and this is one of those things that, in my opinion, is definitely easier than I thought it was going to be when I started learning how to make it. So one of the other things that it involves is creating a roux. And um, a roux is, it's R-O-U-X. It's equal parts butter and flour. And anything that you add to that after you make it, it's going to thicken your sauce. So you can add... Um, milk and cheddar and get a macaroni and cheese base um, you can add like cream and parmesan and get alfredo base um, there's so many things that you can do once you learn how to make a roux I didn't mean to rhyme that so I'm gonna get the rest of this chicken cooked up seasoned and then we'll start it in the pan okay I've washed this by the way but we're gonna go uh, actually we're not gonna go to the oven so I've got the stove top set as like a medium high right now. Um, this is the pan that I'm using. I'm going to put some olive oil in there, um, season this chicken, wait for the olive oil to heat up a little bit, and then get that in there to start cooking. Um, I've washed everything since then, obviously, and I'm going to rewash my hands uh, after I do this because it's going to get all up in it. So pepper 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 if you know you know garlic salt i go through i go one through like one of these a month i love it um one of my weird issues with migraines let me see if i can get it to focus down there um is that at some point in like 2000 15 or 16, um, the sight and smell, or not the sight, but eating or smelling ham, like a big roasted ham, made me uh, really, really nauseous and get a migraine, and I don't, I don't know what that came from. Um, that has since gone away, but it took about five years, and then, like, so anytime they wanted to have a ham, they would have to be when I went on vacation or something, when I left the house. Um... And then at one point, I was like, I think I might be able to stand a ham again. And I have been able to eat it ever since. Uh, but another thing that has happened the same way um, is Italian seasoning. And I can't figure out what is in the Italian seasoning that's doing it. It's not sage, because I have sage and stuffing. I think it's the oregano, honestly. Um, but I can't, like, if somebody's cooking something with oregano and I even like get a whiff of it, I immediately get really, really sick. So like when I'm eating at friends' houses or like beforehand, I have to be like, hey, <laughs> please don't make anything with oregano, which is like super embarrassing and annoying. And it's weird having to explain that because like no one has ever heard of that before. Uh, my body's just weird. So um, I keep my spices pretty basic when I'm making kind of like American food, I guess. I don't know if chicken pot, chicken pot pie is probably pretty American. Um, when I'm going Asian, I'll use, you know, the same two or, pe you know, pepper and garlic salt and then ginger and, and, you know, some more Asian-y spices and the same, you know, the, the one I kind of can't handle is, um, cumin. I think cumin tastes like, or it smells like body odor. So I have a hard time with that sometimes, which sucks because I really, really, really want to try Indian food. Um, but anyways, so we've got this lightly seasoned here. Um, there'll be more seasoning added to everything. One of the ingredients I forgot to mention that I use is, uh, chicken stock, um, or chicken broth. The type that I use is the powdered kind. Um, it's just easier to store because we won't go through a whole, uh, like carton of liquid chicken stock unless I'm making a soup. So, um, we just get the powdered kind. Um, and when I get to that point, I'll show you what I'm using. Um, but yeah, this is ready to go start cooking. Um, let me take you with me real quick. Let me see if I can do this. Hold on. Okay. 
Okay. Sorry about the camera ride. Yep, we're just gonna dump everything right in there. Get out, get out of there. There we go. Um, we're gonna let this go for a couple minutes. Kind of stir it around a little bit. And then I'm gonna wash this bowl out real quick because we're gonna cook this stuff, put it back in the bowl, um, and then do kind of our base, base things. And then while we're waiting for this chicken to cook, we're gonna go back over here and cut the vegetables. If I'm chopping a bunch of vegetables, I really like these containers. These work really great. Um, it's wet because I just did the dishes. These work really great for obviously storing leftovers because they're short, so you can like, stack a couple on each other. Um, but when I'm chopping a bunch of stuff, I like to put it all uh, in here. So we're gonna start by chopping an onion and I'm really bad at chopping onions. Um, we get a new knife. I also um, talked a little bit earlier about soups. I love soups, I make a lot of soups. So I always save my vegetable scraps, except for the ones with stickers on them. For soup making, um, I have Ziploc bags in the freezer that I just add to, and then when I'm ready to like make my soup, I just dump them all out in the broth. Um, I make one that is chicken and rice. Um, that's kind of like a, a chicken noodle, it's chicken and rice. Um, and it's got carrots and celery in it, but it also has some uh, green pepper and onion. Um, the green pepper is not spicy or anything, but it kind of adds a little, um, almost like a jambalaya taste, maybe. So, yeah, we're going to get this. Get these diced. And I love onions. I, I love onions. I think to some people I might go overboard on onions, but I don't give a poop. I'm crazy like that, son. Sorry, I'm cutting way down below frame. One of my favorite kitchen tools, I don't know if I'd classify it as a gadget. Um, is a bench scraper, bread scraper, um, cause it's really good at picking up all the stuff and just throwing it in there. the chicken. So that was a whole white onion. And now we're gonna use some carrots 
and some celery. You can get this stuff pre-chopped too. Um, you can get like pre-peeled carrots or baby carrots and cut them in half. Um, you know, whatever makes your life easier. I am like all for that. So I'm gonna do this whole bunch. I'm gonna go wash it and then I'm gonna see where I'm at um, as far as using it all. So I'll be right back. Okay. This is what our chicken's looking like right now. Um, I overcook it a little bit when I'm doing pot pie. Like I will undercook it during this step. I just want it to get some good color on it. Uh, and then it'll cook the rest of the way in a little bit more um, once we throw it in the oven. So um, when I do like chopped up chicken that's going in stuff, I tend to overcook it a little bit because um, I like the crunch, which some people find weird. Um, and I know that the sauce around it is gonna make up for any dryness that the chicken gets. Um, if I'm doing like regular chicken that needs to be moist or whatever, uh, then I'll do it like to the temperature. But when I'm doing this, like I really wanna get a good color on it um, and then leave a bunch of good bits in this pan for us to use in our sauce. So. Okay, let's see if I can focus you guys down a little bit more. This tripod doesn't like to cooperate very much though, so we'll see. When I get to about the inside of this type of, this type of stuff with the celery, this is what I'll throw into my um, vegetable, my frozen vegetable stuff. And then I'll trim the edges and I'll trim about here and also throw that into my vegetable stock. Celery and vegetable stock is just so good, especially like these greeny bits. So good. And you don't wanna cut these so small that they're gonna get like stringy and mushy and weird in the pot pie as it's cooking. So here's one of my bags of frozen vegetables. I think this is like all celery. So I'm just gonna put all of this in. And I put like all the onion skins in um, because when I make my broth, like you obviously drain all the weird stuff out of it. Um, so that part doesn't really matter. Oh, I already did that. I already cut off the ends. I generally cut a little bit quicker than this too, but I've got the camera between my eyeballs and the thing, so I'm going a little bit slow so I don't hurt myself. So we used, you know, most of a whole like celery stock or whatever the whole bit's called. Um, so this stuff we can put away for something else. Stir the chicken. So, that is what we are cooking with. Yum. Okay. 
Alright, and it's Carrot's turn. Let's see how busted some of these are. I'm gonna go wash these off. Okay, before I peel and chop these carrots, I'm going to put the chicken back in its original bowl. Um, and then we're going to get the onions, and I've got some minced garlic. I just get jarred minced garlic. I'm going to throw in there to start cooking up real quick. All right, we're going to put get some good crusty bits built up on there from the chicken. Uh, a smidge more olive oil in there. I've turned it down. I actually think I'm going to turn it down to two. Our stove runs pretty hot. Um, so I'm going to turn that down so we don't char our garlic and our onion. Go over here and look for my garlic. Garlic, where are you? Ha, found it. Okay, highly recommend getting minced garlic. Um, sorry about all of the camera movement. I have, like I used to do like a garlic press in that whole situation and I still do occasionally, but it's just, man, it's not worth it. Um, for day-to-day -day cooking. I also like a lot of garlic. Still, I'm not sure if this has cooled down enough. We'll see. Is actually turning really quickly so we're gonna get it off the heat. Now I'm gonna put my onions in here. I'm gonna do that off camera. I'm gonna make sure that is not burning because it looks like it might be. So I'll be right back. Cut is super interested and she's not allowed in the kitchen and she knows it. All right let's cut some carrots. Actually you know I'm gonna peel the carrots off screen because you guys know how to peel carrots or whatever. I'm pretty sure everyone knows how to peel a carrot. Just kidding. Um, I shouldn't have said that. So maybe not everyone knows how to peel a carrot. So I stew all mine through here. I've washed these. So we're gonna get them peeled. And then I'm gonna throw the peels in my veggie broth bag. Pop that back in the freezer because I think I'm done cutting vegetables right now. Once I get all the ends off of here, I'll put those in there too. So you can put a bunch of different stuff in your pot pie. Um, I put peas in it. Um, I put potatoes in it. Just kind of whatever. Like I almost think of it as like a chicken stew. Like whatever you got going on, you know. Um, there's a lot of vegetables that work well together. Um, like root vegetables always kind of work well together in something like this. So but we're doing carrots and onions and celery today. Alright. These are all peeled. You're gonna be soup later. You're gonna be soup later, and you're gonna be soup later. You're gonna be soup later. All right, so when we cut these, if you get like, that's not super thick carrot. This is probably a pretty thick carrot. What I like to do is kind of roll it across the core and then chop. So, and then if they're like super big, I'll cut them. I'll cut them up. Um, yeah, so you kind of roll it. This 
fun fact, I have heard, and I don't know if this is accurate, that the amount of pressure it would take to cut off a bit of your own finger would, is the amount of pressure that it would take to cut a carrot. Um, but your brain just like stops that from happening. The onions and garlic are getting pretty soft. Uh, a couple celeries fell in, that's fine. So our goal when we are cooking the vegetables in the pan like this is to not necessarily cook the vegetables all the way through because the oven is gonna do that. Um, but it's to get like a nice bit of coloring on there, a nice bit of like char. It helps pick up all the like chickeny bits on the bottom of the um, pan from earlier when we cooked the chicken. And all of that together is like, it's one of those things that like takes um, like a homemade pot pie an extra level. And I do this with soup as well. This is the same like starting process for cooking soup. Um, so like this is something that you can practice with a bunch of different dishes and then learn to make a bunch of different bases. Um, it's one of the neat things about cooking is like if you get a handful of techniques down, you can use them along like a bunch of different lines for a bunch of different purposes. So like if you're able to make this chicken pot pie recipe, you can make a chicken noodle soup. Um, you can make a stew, you can make a, you know, like a beef stew, beef soup, uh, whichever, cause the, all of the starting process is the same. Also, if you can see that <laughs> um, bruise, it's, um, I had blood work done and my veins suck. So I had blood work done like five days ago and it's still there. Um, there was one point when I was in the hospital and I was a teenager where they had, this was before I knew about my veins, before I knew I could like advocate for myself as far as health stuff goes. Um, but I had to get blood drawn and they had like a phlebotomist in training. Um, and she came and tried like, I think it was a total of like 17 times between both of my arms. And I had bruises from here, like all the way to my shoulders. It was awful. It looked like I had gotten into like a fight or been abused or something. Um, and even like up through my 20s, um, I would have people that would take it as like a challenge to try and get my veins. They're like, oh, well, I could get it. And I'm like, no, nah, most of the time people have to go through my hand. And they're like, no, I can do it. And then uh, they couldn't. So um, now thankfully I've got <laughs> enough like self-assurance that I can advocate for myself um, but even then it still happens. Um, like this one wasn't terrifically bad, but it, she did have to dig around a little bit, which is gross. Um, and I knew like, as soon as I felt it, I was like, yeah, I'm going to be bruised from this. So, all right, we're going to add our vegetable mixture to our chicken mixture. I'm going to try and get the camera set up over there. I was just trying to do it a little bit ago and it was not cooperating. So we'll see how this goes. Uh, one tripod change later, and also this one wobbles, so I apologize. That looks good. All right, we've got this on like a medium low. I'm gonna go ahead and add the rest of our vegetables. You also wanna get your crust out they need to, um, if they're frozen, they need like a lot of time to unthaw. If they just been refrigerated, they like you still need to give them time to like loosen up. Um, and those instructions are on the packaging. Um, also one of these is gonna be a chicken pot 
cake because I don't have a second pie pan at the moment. Um, right about now you want to preheat your oven to 425. We're gonna kick up the heat a little bit towards medium. And then we are also going to season the crap out of this. Go a little easy on salt because the uh, chicken broth that we're gonna use uh, has, um, you know, has salt in it. It's gonna make everything saltier. So I am going to pop a whole lot of butter in here. I'm gonna do actual butter. I'm gonna do four tablespoons. Looks like a little bit more, but it's fine. You wanna note how much you put in here. And like, again, I'm making two pot pies with this, or like two plus. So, um, but you want, so to make a roux, it's equal parts butter and flour. So this is your butter. So then when I put my flour in, I have to use four tablespoons of flour. And I hope I have flour, cause I just remembered I haven't looked in a while. We had an ant infestation in one specific cabinet that we keep like all of our baking stuff in. Uh, so hopefully I have flour. I'm pretty sure I do. I think I had to buy some when I went to Wisconsin with my mom, so. Um, yeah, I'm gonna give this time to do its thing. All the little crispy get bits that we had from the chicken um, are coming off of the pan now and are starting to get mixed in with this. So it's gonna like, it's just gonna make the sauce taste really, really good. I'm gonna spray these bad boys down with some pan and get our first, uh, first crust in there. These crusts have been sitting out since I started cooking the vegetables, so they're gonna be probably pretty fine. Uh, pretty good. So. And I just kind of let the weight of the crust unwind it. If yours is catching and if it's tearing, you need to let it set out a little bit longer. feeling a little bit extra what I will do is I will take the act the, um, the top crust like after I get the mixture in there and I'll make like a fancy design on it I've used cookie cutter I've like used a pasta cutter to get it um, to get it into strips that I can crisscross or braid um, I'm not feeling super extra right now still recovering from the festival I had to edit that video and get it up today um, yeah, so <laughs> we're not feeling it today. Aaron, babe, I'm sorry, but you and Todd are getting, you're getting the chicken pot cake. It'll be fine. It'll taste good. I promise. Hey, look at that. We've got flour. Also, Look at that. It's a dog. Hi, baby girl. Can't come in the kitchen, though. You gotta stay out. Okay, so let's go back over here. The butter is melting very nicely. It smells so good in here. So good. So good. 
It's weird to try and check where my camera is at on here because it's above me and I'm short. So, all right, we got our butter. It's all melted. That was four tablespoons or a quarter of a cup. I'm pretty sure. So I got my quarter of a cup here. Since this isn't baking, I mean, part of it is baking, but this part's not baking. Um, you don't have to be super exact on it. You don't want to be off by like a half a cup or whatever, but um, with regular baking, you have to be pretty precise on your measurements, but this is just the sauce. So you just want it to coat everything. It's gonna start cooking off, I'm cooking the flour a little bit. Um, you don't ever want to eat raw flour. That's why they warn you about cookie dough and stuff. It's not the eggs, it's actually the flour. Um, but I've also, like, who hasn't eaten flour? Or cookie dough, I mean. So yeah, this is what it's gonna look like. It's kind of pasty, it looks kind of chunky and weird. We're gonna let that cook for just a couple seconds. And I'm gonna get my milk. And I'm gonna get my chicken powder. Uh, chicken powder, milk, and again these brands are just what I use, what Mac and I use cooking normally, so it's also what we have available local to us. Um, now with chicken powder, like I'm really bad at kind of figuring how much to use. Um, so we're going to start with this much. It's probably a lot, but it's gonna taste really good. Actually, I'll put a little bit more in there. And then... Gonna... This is one quart of milk, um, and I've put most of it in there so far. We're gonna start and see what this does. Okay, we're gonna turn it up just a bit. It's about a medium with a little nudge towards high. I think I'm gonna actually put the rest of this in there. Most of the rest, I'm gonna chug that last little bit. And get our chicken popped in there. And we're gonna keep stirring. Right now it is very liquidy. Um, it's very thin. But the roux that we made with that flour and that butter and how like it just looked kind of weird all over the vegetables, kind of pasty. Once the milk gets warm enough, that's gonna activate and it's going to thicken this milk like kind of almost instantly. Um, or not instantly, but when it happens, it happens just all at once. I'm gonna keep stirring. Before it gets to like it's boiling, I'm gonna go ahead and taste this just to make sure it's salty enough and not overly salty. It is almost overly salty. All right, so again, I'm making like two plus of these. So reduce the, the amount as needed. Like you can also just, I mean, you can just make this mixture and eat it, or you can put biscuits on top of it or eat it with bread. Like I am going to make some Grand's biscuits and just like dunk it in mine like a thick stew. Um, I will like, Eat, eat it as a regular chicken pot pie, but I, excuse me, I don't have room in my oven to do three. So, reminder that your oven should be at 425. I'm sorry, I don't know what that is Celsius. I 
actually. We we're waiting for that to stick in. It looks like it's about. Um, hey Alexa, how much in Celsius is 425 degrees Fahrenheit? 425 degrees Fahrenheit is about 218.33 degrees Celsius. There's your answer. I'm going to keep this going because I want you to see when it starts to thicken. It also smells so good right now. Oh my goodness, you guys. turn the temperature up a little bit almost all the way to high because I'm getting impatient um, if this is your first time cooking this be patient though because you don't want your milk to scald um, or burn but I need to get this in the oven There's also a recipe where you um, will make this in an oven safe pan, which this is oven safe. This is the time and table collection from Walmart and I love it because it's rainbowy. Um, but this is good in the oven like up to 500 degrees or something ridiculous. So I could just put this whole thing in the oven, um, but you'll put like biscuits, like biscuits over the top of it. And it's kind of like an upside down pot pie. I have a beef stew recipe where you do that, um, but you make homemade biscuits and it's really good. It's one of my favorite things. Towards the fall, I will definitely make that for you. The recipe for it went pretty viral on TikTok at one point, um, but I, I tried it with the wine that it includes in the normal recipe um, and I just don't like stuff that's cooked in wine that much um so i just i use tomatoes instead for that acidity i get cherry tomatoes and i kind of cook them in this pan um on their own in oil until they get to where they're kind of bursting and then i will like i just put them in the stew like that all right let's see I'm getting sick you also don't want it to get super thick because it is going to thicken in the oven a bit. So I just want it to get to where it's just a little, to almost the consistency of like a heavy cream. Please thicken. Let's go. I have stuff to do. feel it as I'm stirring it that it's starting to go. Which I've said a few different times, but if you want it to go quicker or be thicker, you could use more flour versus butter. Um, but I like to keep my one to one ratio. You can also thicken stuff with a cornstarch slurry, which is where I think it's a one-to-one -one ratio of cornstarch to water. And you mix that separately. And then in a contain in like a little bowl, you mix it separately. And you don't want to use a lot. You don't want to use like one cup. You want to do like a couple tablespoons. Um, but then you'll pour that in here. And that's kind of like if you wanted to instantly thicken something, um, like a gravy or something that's finishing. It's boiling, baby. Oh, 
Okay, I'm gonna call that thick enough for me. Like I said, it's gonna thicken as you cook it. Um, and you don't want it so thick that it's like dry when you get it out of the oven. All right, this thing is very heavy. You gotta be very careful with this because it is a lot. Let's see if I can scoop some. And you also really want to try to avoid overfilling these because it's going to like spatter and do a bunch of weird stuff when you get it in the oven. This might, this one here, I don't know where, where I'm lined up. That one here might be a little too full. That's about as like full as I would get it. And then the rest that's in the oven is, or that's in the pan still is mine. So. One more test, taste test of the broth. That is so good, so good. Oh my God. I like to learn how to make these recipes that it's really easy to get frozen um, because they're just so much better when you, they're better for you and they're better when you can make them yourself. Um, and like almost everything I've learned how to cook has been easier than I was, than I thought it was going to be. The main exception to that is I make beef wellington and it is a pain in the ass. It is a huge huge pain in the ass but it's good I love it but it's like it's an all-day process <laughs> at least the way that I make it is because there's so many steps to it that uh, I just like I'll do a step and then they're like you have to do a bunch of stuff where you have to like make this and then chill it and then make this and then chill it and so I will do that and chill it and then I'll let it sit longer than it needs to in the fridge just because it's like all right I'm not ready to start this again okay so these have a tendency of like boiling up and over especially the way that I fill them so I put mine on a cookie sheet or a cooking sheet Nope. All right, we're gonna put the cooking sheet under on a different rack. Okay, and I just twist my crust super easy. Again, unless I'm going for something like really special presentation wise, I just twist it like this, fold it the bits over itself, and it's gonna look fine. So this is gonna go in for a total of 30 to 40 minutes. You're gonna wanna check the crust about 20, 15, 20 minutes in to make sure the outside's not like overly browning. If it is, you can put some um, aluminum foil around the edges or just aluminum foil over the top of it. Like I will just cut a sheet or like get a sheet that's a little bit bigger than this um, and do that. And then you just cut a couple of slits 
This is important for the steam to escape, otherwise your pie will explode. I'm pretty sure that's what happens anyways, I don't know. I actually know you're supposed to cut slits. You can freeze these pretty easily, so you can make ahead of time. Like you can make a, the same amount of batch that I did and then just pop these in the freezer and take them out. I don't know reheating instructions on that because ours never like last that long for me to be able to freeze them. Um, so. One thing I'm gonna do to be a little bit extra is I'm gonna do an egg wash on top of them. So. One egg. In there. That's one of those skills that looks impressive to do and it's very easy to do. Um, just practice a few times. One of those things that's a lot easier to do than you might think. And you get a pastry brush. Some people put milk in theirs or whatever. If I was doing a Wellington, um, I would put like some big finishing salt over this, but this broth is already pretty salty. The sauce. I don't want to add to that. So we're gonna get these in the oven um, and then I'll be back when I'll check it. I'll see, I'll show you if the crust is getting overdone and then um, we'll be back when it's time to take it out. Okay, so this uh, was a little, um, the crust is cooking a little quickly. So um, off camera, uh, about 20 minutes in, I just put a whole sheet over the top of both of them. I didn't like fold it around the edges or anything special. I just laid a whole sheet across the top of both of the um, pies and um, I had a friend the one who I made the chicken pot cake for was getting hers um, so yeah it looks really good that's what the egg wash does it makes it kind of all shiny and yum yum and then I got my biscuits made so I'm gonna eat that and that oh go focus there we go all right but yeah that is chicken pot pie and I hope you guys uh, consider making it or you know doing it yourself um, cause it is very good and it's a very awesome, uh, like good comfort meal. So, all right. I will see you guys later. Um, happy eating and have a good time. Bye.